Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. I have a Nano VNA donated to the channel by John, my friend and Patreon. Thanks, John. I've used it off and on. The problem with this is in order to use this, I need this. Um, this tiny screen. See? <laughs> I, I, even with my glasses, I got old eyes. Uh, and uh, battery life's okay, but the input buttons are real fiddly. You know, and in the display touchscreen is real finicky. It's nice. It's a nice tool, but don't you wish it could be bigger? This is the CC Nano VNA F version 2. Four inch screen. Big. Bright. Easy to read. Same features and functions as the smaller Nano VNA, but in a ruggedized aluminum case, 4-inch touchscreen, uh, 5 amp hour, or 5,000 milliamp hour as they like to say, but it's 5 amp hour battery that can actually be used as a power bank to charge your phone if you need to in a pinch. Um, definitely nice buttons over here instead of that fiddly little scroll thingy. Uh, it's a real nice little unit. Let's take a closer look at it. So here's the box. What's in the box? What's in the box? Well, let's see. Some bubble wrap. Well, that's good. A USB cable. USB uh, A to C. A Nano VNA plastic enclosure box. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Oh, it has air breather holes here, I guess. Well, one Nano VNA dash F version two. Card, can you read that? Ah, I don't read Chinese. Probably Mandarin. Oh, look at there, it's an English side. Okay. Thanks for acquiring this three gigahertz portable vector network analyzer. Documentation software firmware, yada yada yada, is available on www.sysjoint.com. If you encounter any problems, support at sysjoint.com. Well, okay. Alrighty, so there's the unit. Oh, it's nice and hefty. Let's peel the plastic, shall we? I guess some people enjoy that. Uh, yeah, static is sticking to me. Okay, um, it's an extruded aluminum case. It's got a little heft to it. Feels feels solid. TX RX ports. Uh, for reflection and insertion loss tests. On this end, we have USB-C uh, charge and data port, on-off mechanical switch. This is interesting. This has a 5 amp hour battery. Uh, they say it can run for 7 hours of continuous use. Or you can actually um, use this port to use the battery to charge something. Uh, five volt, one amp. Uh, so you can <laughs> you can use it as a power bank in an emergency, I guess. That's cool. Little uh, indicator LED, and instead of on the regular Nano VNA, it's got that little scroll wheel, fiddly push button thing. This has three solid buttons. So that should make the user the user interface a little bit easier. comes right up in Smith chart mode. All right. What else do we have in the box? Well, let's see. Over here are the calibration plugs. Yep, there's a 50 ohm load. That one's a short, that one's an open. Uh, we've got two cables, a stylus for operating the screen. Nice. I can actually read this screen. Very nice. Okay, so right now it's sweeping from 50 kilohertz to 3 gigahertz. <laughs> okay, we'll shut that off for now. We'll come back. We'll definitely be putting this guy through its paces. I like this. I like this big screen. I like this heavy case. This is, uh, this is very nice. Okay. 
Um, over here, we've got some adapters. We've got a right angle SMA, a um, male to male, and a female to female. So we've got all kinds of uh, SMA hookup connect uh, stuff. That's what comes in the box. Let's uh, let's put this little guy to use, shall we? So I uh, I hooked it up to my NFED half wave just to give it a quick quick look here. I haven't really started testing it extensively. I just wanted to get into it real quick. And uh, as you can see, it has found the SWR dips. I'm scanning from 1 to 30 megahertz, the entire HF spectrum. It's updating about once per second. Uh, actually, a little faster than that. Tick, 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 tick. A little bit faster than once per second. It's doing the entire HF spectrum, which is kind of cool. Uh, the marker is at this first dip right here, which is at 7.09 megahertz. And you can... Yeah... I'm going to try not to uh, get glare on your screen, but you can drag the marker around to put it someplace where, you know, it's easier to read. So 7.09, 1.22 to 1. There's the marker there. I can use the buttons to move the marker. Oop, went too far. There we go. 9.12. Um, dip it down to five, or you can use the um, marker search, search right, it'll go to the next data point. There, yeah, jumped to there, which is at 14.34. My antenna is a little bit long. I can hit search right again, it'll go to the next one 21.3. So, real quickly, I can um, characterize an antenna. Oop, back. Search right. Go to the next one, which is here, which is at 27.97. That's interesting. It's closer to the CB band than 10 meters. Um, but if I wanted to move it up slightly, there's 28.26 in the 10 meter band, 1.2 to 1, so still usable. So yeah, really nice. Um, it's, this display is wonderful. Having this big display, oh, I love this. This is great. And it's pretty fast. So just, you know, at a glance, I'm, I'm really liking this. So I'm going to go and uh, look at the specs. I'll bring those up on your screen here. Um, you can snapshot that if you want to have a closer look at it. Or you can go to the SysJoint website and um, uh, look at their documentation for it. Speaking of documentation, they have a very nice user manual for this. I just downloaded this off their site, and I have to say, for a Chinese product, this is the best English user's manual I have seen. The grammar is correct. The language is clear. They definitely hired a good English speaker to put this manual together. It, it's great. Um, lots of graphics, nice and clear illustrations. There's a breakdown of the main screen. They have little, you know, notations here and then a nice breakdown of what each of the items are. The language is good. It's a, it's a very good user's manual. I'm going to be comparing this device to my Mini VNA Pro 2 wireless vector network analyzer. Uh, this is a very nice device. As you can see, it's about $450, quite a bit more expensive. But I want to see if the CC device is on frequency and how accurate it is. And speaking of frequency, we're going to test that first. I took my magnetic loop and I tuned it precisely to 14.1 megahertz using my ICOM 705, which I know is frequency accurate. I've zero beaded it to WWV. So now that I had the magnetic loop precisely on 14.1 megahertz, I first scanned it with the Mini VNA Pro, and here is the result. And as you can see, spot on, 14.101 from the screenshot. So now I'm going to go ahead and scan that with the CC device, and we'll see if it's accurate. Well, as we saw from the screenshot, now the Mini VNA, the blue Mini VNA, said the SWR minimum was 1.04 to 1 at 14.101 megahertz. And the CC 
is showing a minimum SWR of 1.15 to 1, which is a little higher, but it's on 14.1 megahertz, right dead on. So that gives me confidence that this thing is accurate, frequency-wise. Now watch this. I'm going to tune the magnetic loop. I'm going to reach over here and turn the uh, tuning on the magnetic loop. Watch the display. This is one thing cool about the CC. I just shifted it. And I can see the change in real time. I didn't have the marker tracking on that last time, but uh, I was turning it on here. I'm in the marker section under search tracking. I don't know how well you can see that, but I've turned it on. So what happens now is the marker will track the uh, low point as it moves. But I also discovered one little gotcha with this thing. Right now, it is sweeping from 1 to 30 megahertz, the entire HF spectrum, and it is hooked up to the magnetic loop. And when I tune the magnetic loop, it loses the trace, and then it comes back. So there we're at 20.865 megahertz. I'm going to tune it, and it goes away. Tune it some more, tune it some more, tune it some more. There it is, at 21.155 megahertz. What's happening? Um, it loses it when I tune it. Well, let me let me do something here. We're at 21.155. So I'm going to set the frequency stimulus start. I'm going to set that to um, 21 megahertz. And I'm going to set the stop to 23 megahertz. Okay, so now it's sweeping over a much smaller range. Now I'm going to tune the magnetic loop. And you can see it's tracking it. 21.4, 21.5, and we're not losing it. So what was happening before? Well, my theory is that when this is sweeping a bigger range of frequencies, 1 to 30 megahertz, that's a lot of a uh, long range to sweep. It's not doing every frequency. It's not just linearly moving up through the band. It is jumping. It's probably taking a sample every 50 kilohertz or every 100 kilohertz, something like this. I'll put this graphic up on the screen. Uh, it would have to do something like this in order to sweep that much range that quickly. So what's happening is the magnetic loop is so narrow that it's falling between the sample points when you're sweeping a big range. So now, since I've narrowed that range down, it's tracking the loop as I tune it. Just fine, we're not losing it because we're, we're sweeping only a couple of, well, uh, yeah, two megahertz of range. It has plenty of samples to work with. All right, I'm tuning the loop down now. And you can see it's tracking it in real time. This is not necessarily a shortcoming. Um, most every device is going to do something like that. They're going to take multiple samples spaced out to sweep a broad range quickly. Uh, this thing does a lot more than just SWR. Display, format, and these are all the different types of formats we can display here. Log mag, phase, delay, Smith chart, which looks all kinds of wacky with that NFED wire because it has so many responses over such a, a broad frequency range. If I really wanted to see the uh, Results there. I'd need to narrow the range. Let's uh, in fact, let's do that. Let's just let's just look at 20 meters. Okay, so we'll go to stimulus start 13.9 megahertz There we go So that's the Smith chart uh, for the 20 meter section on my end fed wire of SWR of course, there's the SWR curve Q factor Polar linear real and imagined Something I forget from the manual. There's a lot that this can do, reactants, um, that I have got to study. <laughs> the uh, This is a VNA. It's, it's a vector network analyzer. It does more than just SWR. But a lot of the time, that's what we're going to use it for. At least what I'm going to use it for is, is an SWR indication when I'm checking out an antenna. So here is 20 meters on my NFED wire from 13.9 to 14.5 megahertz, the SWR curve. And the SWR minimum <coughs> is uh, 1.62 to 1 at 14.272. So not great, but not terrible. 
certainly usable. Anyway, it's a, it's a nice device. I'm, I'm really digging it. I like the construction of it. I like the responsiveness of it. I like the big screen. It's glorious. The battery life. Um, I even put it to a practical use. I, uh, my friend Tony had a problem with his Skywave loop, so we went out to check his coaxes. So one way you can check a long coax run is with a dummy load. I'm sweeping my MFJ dummy load here, and as you can see, it is mostly flat. So we'll take this out and we'll put it on the end of Tony's coax and we'll see how his coax responds. So Tony has this uh, 80 meter sky loop. It's a full wave loop. This is the four to one ballon that he uses up there. It looks like it's okay, not cracked or blown apart or anything. So we hooked up the uh, dummy load to his first long length of coax and we swept it. And nope, it's no good. Look at this. You can see that it's far from flat. There's a huge jump in SWR towards the upper frequencies there. Uh, he had a splice in there on a shorter piece of coax, so we took the tape off the splice, and this is what we found. One of the connector ends totally corroded here, so water got in there and corroded that part of the coax. We swept the other coax, uh, the shorter piece, and with the dummy load on the end, and as you can see, it's mostly flat. So that piece of coax is good. He's probably still going to replace the end on it. Uh, so the VNA made a nice short work of uh, checking out the coax run for his antenna. That's what it's for, you know. It's a nice device for use in the field. Okay, so how much does it cost? Well, here I am on their Amazon store, and as you can see, it sells for $125.99. $126. And you might be thinking, well, the Nano VNA is a, is a lot cheaper than that. Well, yeah, but this is in a little bit different class. It's a bigger screen, it's a heavy case, it's a longer battery life. This is more in the class of a portable network analyzer like a rig expert, which is quite a bit more expensive. Uh, any of the uh, antenna analyzers that you get that are in what I would categorize this uh, in that class as far as, you know, a large device, a rugged device, good battery life, clear big screen um, capabilities, you're going to pay a lot more. Uh, so this is actually not that bad when you think about it that way. And the rep that uh, I talked to with this unit has told me that they're going to give me a promo code for a limited time, it will be in the video description below. And if you use that promo code, you'll get an additional 10% off. So if you want to get one of these, take advantage of that offer. I'm not sure how long it's going to last, maybe only a couple of weeks. Uh, I'll put the dates down there that it's good for. So that's the CC Nano VNA F version 2. I like it. I'm going to use the heck out of this thing. Uh, this is going to be my ne new favorite antenna analyzer when I need to work on antenna projects around here. Um, yeah, it's, you know, I, my mini, my blue mini VNA is really nice, but I've always got to bring my tablet with me. And um, it doesn't do UHF. It, it stops just above two meters. I'll still probably use it occasionally. I'm just not sure why or how, because this, this does everything I need in a screen I can read. Um, yeah, I like it. So uh, go down and look at the description if you're interested in this and, and save yourself a little money if you, when you buy it. Uh, anyway, I hope you found that useful and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.